Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy Edition, and these are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to catch the show live or just catch these edited clips. I know they're shorter, they're smaller, they're easier to consume, and uh, hey, it gets all your news out of the way a little earlier anyway. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive on in. Before we do, you can help support the channel by heading on over to switchlinux.com forward slash affiliates. I have the list of affiliates, and I'm looking at this, and I realize... Uh, I did not actually include, I do have affiliate links now for ExpressVPN, and I did not include them on it. I literally thought they were on this page. I know they are on my Think Life Media page, so you can go to thinklifemedia.com forward slash affiliates and find that link as well. I will uh, try and put it in the description down below for the edited version of the video, but you can check out all of the different things. I do, I added a grammar checker on there. I grabbed this because I'm working on a writing channel, which will be out soon, so I'm trying to get some more pro writing type affiliates in there as well. Uh, there's some podcasting stuff. Two VPNs. Um, I have not made it as a final decision on private internet access yet, um, but they're opening sourcing like everything. That's actually a good sign. So I want to look into them. Um, Nord is there. I have uh, four web hosting companies and of course, Amazon. You can take care of your shopping over there using the Amazon link. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive on in. First one's from BuzzFeed, but this is actually, BuzzFeed was the first to break the article and then TechCrunch picked up and then it pushed out to, you know, a bunch of other places. So I actually went back to BuzzFeed because they were the first to break the article, not that I actually spend any time looking at BuzzFeed news. But a data leak exposed the personal information of over 3,000 Ring users. This is, once again, continuing on. We are seeing exactly how many consecutive weeks we can do a Ring story. I'm actually going to go back soon and count these and see how many consecutive weeks it's been. It's got to be at least at least eight to ten weeks now consecutively that we've had a ring story. So we talked last time about a there was a hacker ring that got into these ring cameras and Amazon was saying, oh, it's cred stuffing and all this. And a lot of people, even in that, when that came out, they said, this is not cred stuffing. We are not using the same passwords. Well, a database was found online that had over 3,000 ring users full logins, account details, things that could have only have come from the account panel at Ring. So it raises some new questions about, are these actually getting hacked or not? Now, one of the challenges that some people are suggesting is that it is possible to brute force the Ring cameras because they don't have any protection if you log into it with an odd IP address. If you attempt to log into it multiple times, there's no backend security to detect brute forcing. So some people are proposing that it's brute force hacks uh, because they don't have this. And so of course the idea is they're saying we are reaching out to make sure everybody that we think potentially could be affected has changed their password and enabled two-factor authentication. But BuzzFeed contacted five people. I think TechCrunch contacted like 10 people. Nobody had received any comment back from Ring yet. So apparently Ring is not telling people, even though it says it's telling people. I bet Ring's telling the hackers to change the password and turn on two-factor authentication because, you know, why not? <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's our Ring story for the day. Uh, next in the news, the FBI secretly demands tons of consumer data from credit agencies. This is another reason why we need to get the, the Congress back to work actually doing things for the American people and banning any form of data harvesting businesses that do not have any other purpose. For example, Equihax, Experion, and Trans go off to fight the union somewhere because these companies, among thousands of others are scooping up and harvesting and collecting data. We don't have any part in that. We can't request the data. We can't tell them to delete the data. We don't do any business with these people. There is no legitimate reason in this world they need that data. But the government's probably not going to do anything about it because the FBI goes into these companies that have everything and everything about us and says, hey, we want to see their information. And this is not just credit report information. This is actually more detailed information that's not even really available to you or to anybody seeking a credit report that these agencies know about you. So, you know, Congress is asking questions. Probably some congressperson was investigated by the by the uh, the FBI. But anyway, uh, this started back around 2000, uh, 2015 is when people started to pay more attention to this. I forget exactly how long ago this has been going on. But 
They've had, you know, many dozens, uh, if not hundreds or thousands of requests, and all of these requests come with a gag order, which I think would be an unconstitutional thing. The fact of the matter is, if a police want to come in here and execute a search warrant, I have to be notified of that because of constitutional rights. Why is it that they can be, they can search through all sorts of your personal data that was collected without your knowledge, without your consent, without your permission, and without even doing any business, why can they search through all of that stuff without anything? So let your Congress people know, and your senators know, and your whoever know, we need to stop the practice of harvesting data in this case. We need to stop. Because the FBI is just using such data. All right, uh, any of you down there from Brazil who are these addressless people? Well, Google is now creating addresses for more than 2 million Brazilians. Uh, and I was like, that's kind of scary. And then I started reading the article. And of course, it's just talks in here about they're going to be creating all these all these things. So look at this. Google partnered with uh, Sao Paulo government. Uh, my apologies if I didn't say that right. For the Rodus Roros project to map out an area of over 60,000 square kilometers, giving addresses to 340,000 residences. By including them in a new database, roughly 2 million citizens will be given access to medical care, emergency services, government identification, and more. Uh, no, just let me go out and live in the fields by myself. Um, I don't want Google in this. But yes, Google's like, dude, we got to figure out how to get these people. I got it. Let's go on down there to the government. Let's map all these out. Let's put them into a database and sell them stuff. And now we have their data. Yay! Yay for Google. This is your weekly reminder now. I'm backing from monthly down to weekly to go watch the Selfish Ledger. That's insanity. Anyway, um, but yes, they are including all of these people, 340,000 residents in a database with medical care and emergency services and government identification. This is so awesome. This is so, so much progress that we will take all of these people living in the middle of nowhere and now put them inside of Google's databases. How glorious is it all? 2018, it says Google introduced the open source plus codes program to give governments and citizens the option to freely create their own addresses, regardless of remoteness, political turmoil, or shifting borders. I wonder if these addresses say anything like, you know, uh, 15 steps past the big rock. Um, that'd be fun, right? Um, I used to live in areas like that where you give directions based upon the cow in the field. Um, you know... Drive on down this road, and uh, when you see the cow, the lonely cow is standing in the field, take a right. And then go on down, and there's an oak tree, and turn left. And then when it's really old, I was discussing this in our writers group yesterday, uh, because one of the people there had this fabulous story about some, apparently some famous couple in the State College area that I've never heard of. Uh, because it was so long ago, and and uh, the, we were talking about the fact that here in State College, sometimes people give you directions based on where an old store used to be. Like, I kid you not, like, go on down to where the bank store used to be. What store's that? I mean, dude, and I've been here for 20 years. i never heard of that. <laughs> I know my way around this town. But anyway, uh, yeah, Google is working on addresses to make sure that all these people have their information in databases to access their medical stuff and their government stuff. Isn't that so nice of Google? Totally awesome. All right. Hackers steal data from more than 15 million patients and then sell it back to the lab who lost it. Ooh. I wonder if they gave him a block of salt to rub in that wound. Eh, take this. <laughs> So anyway, this is Life Labs. It says it negotiated with hackers after they demanded a ransom. Tell them no. Tell them, yep, you got to show up right here and we'll give it to you. Right after the FBI arrests you and throws you in jail for a long, long time. So Toronto-based Ontario uh, Life Labs notified Canadian authorities of the attack November 1st. The company said a cyber attack struck the computer systems that stored Data for about 15 million customers. So stolen information included names, addresses, email addresses, customer logins and passwords, healthcare numbers, and lab tests. So any of my um, northern neighbors, I've seen at least a few of you on here today so far. My northern neighbors, your data may have been leaked to some hackers. And then the fool company turned around and decided to negotiate them. How much you want to bet that they took the money, ran, and kept the data. And they're going to just keep using it. And I bet they're going to do that. So... 
you know, LifeLab said uh, the investigation so far indicated that the access test results were from 2016 or earlier and belonged to 85,000 customers. Access health card. See, why are you holding on to data that long that's connected to the internet? I get holding data a while. Like I hold data for at least a, at least five or six years, but none of it is a, anywhere remotely close to anything connected to an internet. It's on offline servers, one backed up here, one backed up in a bank vault. Completely not on the internet at all. The only time it gets connected to a computer is when I actually have to go back and search for something. That's how we should have a mandate. Anything older than X years, it's got to be off of an internet connection. No internet connectivity at all. You got to manually work hard, put it back on, and then take it right on back off. So anyway, um, hackers are still going to be continuing to doing this stuff as long as we negotiate with them. So when they steal all your data, tell them, nope, don't care, not getting anything from me. Oh, unroll.me. This is a fun one. So this is an email application that basically it would scan your inbox. <laughs> Who, whoever thought that, that was not a bad idea, scan your inbox to collect all of these, all of these, um, in, uh, basically base, you know, scam emails, things that people harvested your, your email addresses, which should be illegal already anyway. And it's like, okay, we're going to get you off of these without you having to lift a finger. Well, lo and behold, that application was scraping up all of the email receipts the same way that Google scrapes up the email receipts when you're using it. So guys, if you're doing any online shopping, do not ever under any circumstance use a Gmail account. They grab that data, they harvest it, they cross link it to you, to credit card transactions, to ads, and they sell this to people as a way to show how more efficiently your ads are. This is all public knowledge, people. Do not order anything online to a Gmail account. Google is grabbing that data and connecting it to your profile, period. Well, this, this uh, um, organization or this application did the same thing. It was grabbing all this data and turning around and selling it. And of course, the people are like, well, what'd you think we were gonna do with the data? Despite they did have a policy saying, oh no, we wouldn't do any of this. They were caught doing that kind of stuff. So they ended up having a big fine about it. FTC slapped them around. They you know, don't do that again. Um, you know, the rest of us, you know, we have serious problems. They just get a, don't do that again. This is the power that we want to enforce <laughs> robocallers and things. Yeah, right. Talk about a neutered government agency. All right. This one's from Dan. Thanks, Dan. What does your car know about you? So this girl, this guy here hacked a Chevy, uh, to figure it out. So they found somebody with a Chevy bolt who was, uh, willing to come over and allow him to tear it apart. Where's the pictures? Um, oh yeah, let's see, not there, down here, oh, look at this, they'll tear the whole, whole board out, they tear the dashboard out, they're connecting stuff to individual components of his laptop, basically they're figuring out that these things are storing gigabytes and gigabytes of data, literally anytime you're there, like it's one thing to collect how fast you're going, did you slam on the brakes, it's another thing to collect where exactly the car has been, even if the GPS navigation system in the car was turned off, but even worse than all of that is if you connected your phone to the car's GPS system, because we gotta have the convenience of the car GPS system, if you connect the, the Bluetooth system, I mean, you connect your phone to the Bluetooth system of the car, it was harvesting uh, it was harvesting all of the information about your contacts when you called them and even extra information, even the phone calls you made when you were not connected with the car, it would go in and basically would grab your call history and then it would grab all the information it would have about the contacts you had. They literally tracked down individual people that the former ye owner of a car had talked to and had her picture. This is why I don't want to get a car with this kind of stuff. I'd like to just completely disable the SIM stuff. I want to say no tech in this car outside of the, the core function that is needed to make it run. And guess what? I don't care if the automotive industry gets some diagnostic stuff because they're doing far more nefarious things with it than if it's just diagnostic stuff, baloney. I'm going to call complete, thorough, and tutter, utter baloney because you do not need to collect my contact data for your diagnostics for how the car works. My phone conversation is none of your business. So get out of there with that crap. Liars.
Don't buy cars from these morons. Let them all go out of business. Go fail and die, companies. Ford and Chevy. Basically, after 2020, I, I'll nearly every single car, there's one model of Toyota without it, one model of, of uh, um, VW without it. That's about it. I should get in there and just take a hammer, smash it all up bits and pieces. Do not connect your phone to your car's Bluetooth stuff. Do not. It is harvesting your data. Fascinating stuff. All right. And our feature story today in a rare move. Thank you for killing my title right away. Um, oh, Schwab, you can die, Schwab. I hate you. All right. Um, Apple, Amazon, and Google just announced a major partnership. So they are going to get together and formulate a standard for IoT devices. The idea here, now, the problem, Google kind of shot themselves in the foot because all, everyone was had these Nest, and then these contractors for the new buildings were like, hey, we're going to use Nest. And so what they ended up doing is, uh, what they end up doing is they, you know, the contractors were using Nest, and then Google buys Nest, and then Nest starts shutting down the functionality of a lot of its equipment so that you had to have a Google device. So contractors stopped ordering millions of dollars of Nest products because they weren't working. And all of the tech companies are going, oh, this is a problem. And so what they're doing now is they're producing a standard so that the contractors can still have Nest. And then any other device, if you had an Alexa, order me unicorn meat, confirm, or you had a a, uh, a Google device or, um, you know, an, an Apple device. I don't even know why Apple's included here. It's pretty much useless. But if no, no matter which one of those three you had, you will be able to connect that to any given IoT home device. The idea here is to push more IoT into the home. Guys, keep IoT out of your home. It is a bad idea. It is a really bad idea. The, the beautiful, glorious benefits you get for IoT in your house are not worth the price tag that they have not showed us, and they will not show us until they are ready to harvest us. Once again, go watch The Selfish Ledger. Absolutely, go watch The Selfish Ledger. So... Uh, with that, um, they are creating this standard to allow the ability to have any IoT device work with any one of the smart speaker controls so that people can use the smart speaker that they want with the IoT devices that they want and having a standard. This is terrifying to me. Um, not a good direction our world is going into. But uh, let me know what you think about all of these things in the comments down below.